Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's event. Um, we have a few minutes left till we actually get started, but if you've been here before, I always ask at the beginning of the hour, where are you tuning in from? Um, I'm in Brooklyn, New York, but uh, drop in the chat where you're watching from. Um, and I did ask this last week, but I'm very curious. Have you ever cooked seafood for the holidays? Um, I have had it as an appetizer, but not as like the main course, but there's always, there's always uh, another holiday season to give that a try. So hello from Utah and Sarasota. Um, for those of you who are just joining, we're gonna wait a few minutes for anyone to come in, but in the meantime, let me know where you're tuning in from and if you've ever cooked seafood for the holidays, especially if it's Alaskan seafood. Um, Nevada, hello. I know someone in Reno. Um, hi, Connie from Colorado. Oh, I used to live in Iowa, Dennis. I lived in Ankeny when I was in third grade and got my appendix taken out there. <laughs> um, if you're just coming into the room, just let me know where you're tuning in from. And if you've cooked seafood for the holidays before, just drop it into the chat. I'm very curious. Um, Hi, Candy. I feel like I've seen you here before. Um, seen your name anyway. Cooked salmon many times, but no shellfish. Well, today we're cooking all shellfish. So hopefully, um, hopefully you like shellfish and can eat it. <laughs> Hello, Ed from Ohio, um, Oklahoma, Maryland, California. Um, just wait another minute or so. Um, haven't cooked crab. Well, actually, I'll explain this later too, just in case anyone else is coming in, but our crab is pre-cooked, so it's already ready to eat. You just have to heat it up. So um, very, very easy to um, prepare for the holidays. So um, hello, Irving. I feel like I've seen you here before too. I'm starting to remember people's names, I think. Um, I don't get to see your faces though. <laughs> Um, drop in the chat where you're tuning in from. If you haven't yet, I'm always curious to see where everyone is from. Um, and if you've ever cooked seafood for the holidays, I'm going to keep encouraging you to, cause it's my job. So, <laughs> um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Cause I think we're slowing down with the, the trickle of participants. So hello everybody. I'm Kat. I am from the Wild Alaskan Company recipe team. Um, hope you had a really good Halloween yesterday if you celebrated. Um, now that we're into November, it's November 1st, believe it or not, a lot of us are bound to be thinking about the holiday season, festivities, gatherings, parties, or even just what we wanna make as a special meal for ourselves, you know, on a, on a cozy night. So um, today I'm going to be making some really easy, really quick, um, but really tasty appetizers. So just because something is fast and easy doesn't mean it's good. And so these are gonna be um, the case in point for that. So before we get to the recipes, housekeeping as always, I say this every time, but it always bears repeating. If you would like to follow along with captions, I invite you to do that at the bottom of your screen. There should be a button that says captions or three dots that says more where you can access the button for that. Um, that's from your Zoom screen. Um, if you're tuning in on Facebook, it's a little different. I, I don't remember exactly how to do it on Facebook. So um, you're on your own if that's the case. But if at any point during this event you need to leave, um, no worries. We're going to send a link in the next day or so. Um, and then you can also watch on Facebook where we're live streaming um, immediately after the event. Um, if you have questions along the way, um, I can, I'll just ask you to drop that into the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, not the chat. Feel free to chat about other things, but it'll just help us field the questions to me so I can answer them. So um, there's a Q&A button at the bottom that you'll see. Um, as always, I'm joined by a couple of my teammates from the member experience team at Wild Alaskan Company. If they want to come on to camera, they say hi at the top. Hey, Matt and Sonana, how's it going? Um, they're going to be here to help answer some of your questions, reach out if 
you at any point um, have a question about something, even after the event, um, you know, now that we're in November, if you've, if you've heard of the Butterball hotline, they're like your halibut hotline. So any questions about food, they're there for you. So um, also, I uh, want to say that we recently were nominated by USA Today as um, for one of their, what's it called, the 10 Best Reader's Choice Awards um, for Best Meat Delivery Service. And we're, we've are we been in number one since the beginning, um, but if you'd like to, I would highly recommend voting for us just to keep us right at the top. Um, it's definitely, I'll say it's because we have a rock star member experience team. Um, and if you have a really, if you have had a really great experience with Wild Alaskan Company, we would love for you to vote for us and keep us in first place. We're number one out of 20 and like a lot of brands that you probably recognize. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'll only personally bug you to vote for us once a week if you tune in once a week, but you can vote every single day. You can even vote from your computer and your phone if you want to, you know, hack the system that way. That's what I do. So uh, there's a link for that in the chat. Um, and all right, now to the cooking, gotten through all that stuff. Uh, what we're making today, we're going to make garlic butter sprout prawns. I've made this before in one of the events. If you um, have tuned in before, maybe a month or so, or a month and a half or two months ago, when we first got spot prawns back into the rotation. Um, so it's uh, really good for like a proper meal, but also a really nice protein to serve as an appetizer. So we're going to make those again today. Um, we're also going to have um, some steamed crab to serve with a really easy remoulade. It's a sauce, sort of like a New Orleans inspired tartar sauce. Um, tartar sauce, but a little zestier. Um, most of the ingredients you probably already have in your fridge, if, if not all of them, nearly all of them. So um, it's one of my favorite sauces to use as a dip, even as like, um, you know, in place of mayo on a sandwich, goes with nearly every species of seafood that we have. So I'm gonna show you how to make that today um, as an, a dip for appetizers, but literally you can have it with anything. So um, what we're going to be cooking today between the spot prawns and dungies, Dungeness crab legs, um, they come in one of our gift boxes that we are offering that you can send to someone that you know loves to entertain. If you know someone that loves seafood, um, or maybe just someone who just likes to make snacky things for dinner and lunch. Um, there are a few different offerings in this particular gift box. It's called the Wild Appetizer Box. I think um, we can drop a link in the chat if you haven't had a uh, opportunity to look at some of the gift boxes yet, but um, I've just pulled out the spot prawns and shellfish for today's event. I'll do a couple um, events in the future that have some of the other offerings, but um, let me grab the spot prawns and dungies from the freezer. Hello. If you haven't seen these before, these are spot prawns. They come in a nice golden resealable pack like this. Um, depending on the size, you know, you can get anywhere from eight prawns to, you know, more like 15. Uh, today I got nice big ones. So these will be, these are actually really good for like, if you're making a spot prawn cocktail, um, smaller ones are nice for other things. It's sort of up to you. They're good for anything you want to make, but, um, mine came with eight in the pack today. So, um, the wild appetizer box, I think comes with four packs of these. Oh, two packs of these. I just have my notes here. Two packs of those. Um, so it's good for, you know, like a small gathering or, you know, a big snack for yourself. Also, bag of dungies. If you've never had these before, these are amazing. And you get 32 ounces, um, two pounds in the shell. Um, like I said, these are already cooked. They're already scored. Um, there'll be one bag of these in the gift box. Um, these are also a member special that are running today. I'll give you a link for that later. But um, the spot prawns, if you've never had them before, they are some of the best shrimp you'll ever have. Um, they're super sweet. There's no additives. They're just frozen right on the boats. Um, they're much better than your average shrimp. So it's going to be the basis for a much better than average shrimp scampi, aka garlic butter spot prawns. Um, the dungies. Um, I don't really know what else to say about them. They're just super, super good. They're 
little briny, but very sweet, very meaty. Um, I think that they're my favorite to dip because when you get the meat out of the shells, it comes out in like big chunks usually. Um, it doesn't break apart, so they're nice little like morsels. Um, but you can also use them for crab cakes if you want to crack into these and get all the meat out. It's very labor intensive, but I've done it and it's worth it. Um, always helps to have a friend to help you break into them as long as you don't eat it all along the way. But um, it's also really good for something like putting into a risotto or a pasta. So um, in any case, um, let's start cooking. I'm gonna throw these back in the freezer because I have other stuff prepped. I don't want to um, defrost these while we're hanging out here. All right, if you want to switch over to the other camera, I'm going to go to the stove top back here, Sonana. All right, so what we're gonna start with is a little bit of butter in a pan. Um, I'm just making, the recipe I believe is written for uh, two packs of spot prawns, so that's like a nice, uh, nice little party sized affair. Um, today I'm just going to make a pack because it's going to be for me and maybe someone else if they're lucky enough to be around me when these are done. Um, so I'm starting with a mix of butter and oil because um, especially if you're thinking about having these as an appetizer that's just out. When um, butter gets cold, it'll kind of seize up. The oil will help um, all this like delicious fatty goodness stay a little looser um, so that you can have spot cons um, on the table ready um, and serve it at room temperature. Um, it won't like be clumping up onto the prawns. So I've got that in the pan here. Um, I'll let that melt just a little bit more. Um, for as for the spot cons, I have them taken out of the shell, or most of them anyway. That's what they look like. Um, sometimes I will take a pair of scissors and cut them down the back if they're a little bit tricky to peel, especially the smaller ones. Um, when you do that, it doesn't quite look as pretty because they look a little more like they're butterfly. Um, there's usually not much of a vein to clean in there either. Um, if you don't take them, if you don't take a pair of scissors, they like retain this really nice, beautiful shape. So totally up to you if that matters or not. Um, like I said, these are pretty easy to peel. Kind of just do that, go around, the on. Um, and then I always save these shells for stock. I'll put them right back into the resealable bag, stash them in the freezer until I'm ready to make a stock with them um, if I'm not making it right away. Um, if you're using scissors to cut these open, what I would do is just cut them right down the back like this. Goes a little bit faster. Um, and then kind of roll them out of their shells, just like that. So that's it. Easy peasy. Um, like I said, all the shells, I'm just kind of reserving for later. Um, really delicious for stock. Comes together super quickly. Um, so let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop these into the pan because I'm seeing some nice color in that butter and the foaming is indicating to me that it's ready. So these are just gonna go right in. They're gonna cook very quickly, maybe a minute or two at the most um, on each side. And you know, use your judgment on this. They'll get um, opaque. They'll start to curl up a little bit when, um, as like the moisture leaves the prawn as it's cooking. So once they start forming like this nice bee shape, you know, I said a minute or two, but I feel like that was 30 seconds. So um, we're just gonna go 30 seconds on each side today. Depends on how hot your oven is, um, the size of the prawn, um, how, you know, how done you like them. Uh, I actually don't mind if they're a little bit underdone in the center. So you'll see it has really nice golden color as it's searing here. Um, and that's when you see the butter browning in the pan. If you find they're getting too dark too quickly, just go ahead and turn the heat down low. Um, I just turned mine down to low because I don't want these to get too dark. Um, so that is all that makes spot pounds made. I'm going to transfer these to a bowl. 
cook the fawns themselves. And they'll kind of finish cooking through. They fit here in, um, in the little side plate. Um, so to this delicious mixture of prawn juices and butter and oil, I'm going to add a little pinch of chili flakes. Um, this is always optional if for some reason you're not into spice. I love a little bit of heat. I think it makes things really delicious. And now I'm going to add some finely chopped shallots and sliced garlic. So I like slicing garlic for something like this because um, I think these pieces, when they're big, retain a really nice meat flavor. And I'm hoping that they'll get a little bit crispy while they're here in the pan. When you have garlic minced into really small pieces, um, it's a very like pungent, which is delicious, but I think that overpowers the, the taste of the prawns here. So um, just putting them into the pan, um, like a, in larger sizes, will really be a nice compliment to um, the prawns. So let this cook for just until I see them getting a little softer and translucent. Um, any questions while these are cooking down and softening? Um, all good for now, Kat. Thank you. Okay, cool. I'm glad I uh, haven't picked any stuff to tell you. Um, if you don't have shallots, you can always use something like red onion, even yellow onion, um, or leeks some sort of allium. Um, I would definitely encourage you to use garlic if you can, um, but if you don't have it, it, again, it's not essential. Um, I think it's just a really nice flavor to pair up the ponds. Um, and in terms of what else we're gonna add to this, I just have in a moment, some white wine. Um, if you don't have white wine, uh, something like the uh, veggie stock would do just fine, or even spot on stock just to make it a little crunnier. Um, I like white wine because it has some nice acidity um, and will add like a little more brightness to cut through some of this um, delicious, delicious fat. Um, wow, the garlic is looking really lovely right now. I think it is about time for me to add this. It should fizzle up a little bit, nice splatter. So I would do this either off the heat or over very low heat and just expect some bubbling to happen. Let me let this cook down for just a moment and grab my spoon here. All right, so to this, I'm going to turn off the heat altogether. Add the prawns. There's some juices in the bowl here, so don't do not forget to add those. Um, it's coated, sort of integrated, toss them around. You know, it smells ridiculously good. Um, and then to this, I'm going to add some lemon zest, just freshly, freshly zested. Um, not necessary, but really adds nice brightness, pop of flavor, super, super fragrant. Um, so I always love a little zest if you have it. Um, if you don't have a zester like that, you can always try to um, pull off some of the zest like this with a sharp knife, chop it up. Um, it's not quite as fine, but still tasty. And then to this, maybe just a healthy squeeze of lemon juice um, and parsley. This can be done with any herb, actually. I like parsley with it, but you know, if you wanted to use dill, totally fine. Um, I think uh, chives would also be a really nice uh, addition to this as well. I am gonna see this, season this very lightly because I find these are so flavorful. It doesn't need that much. Um, so that's, that's it. This as an appetizer, um, I mean, I would do two bags of it if you're looking for more than two people, um, would be really delicious with just like a nice crusty piece of bread. Um, if you like, you could also save the juices for something else and serve, um, you know, a prawn on like some crostini. Just put it on a little slice of bread with some pesto on top or even romesco so that the prawn doesn't fall off the bread. But I think just like a nice crusty piece of bread to stop up some of these juices is a really, really good way to go. Um, like I said, this can also be a meal, really delicious over something like pasta, um, over rice, whatever you can think of. 
anything where you're actually saving the juices for something delicious is ideal. So that is that for the spot cons. Um, let me move this out of the way. Does anyone have any questions here? Ooh, my camera got a little foggy. Yes, Kat, which kind of white wine did you use? I just had a bottle in the fridge that, um, you know, was from the other night. Um, just a nice dry, nice dry white wine. It doesn't totally matter. So now I'm actually going to turn off this camera right here. So bear with me, folks. I'm going to move it to my other table, hopefully without dismantling everything. Um, so you'll probably just see a logo of all the last companies right now. But I'll be back here in a second. Um, yeah, any white wine is totally fine. Even rosé would be good. I would avoid using red wine just because it's such an overpowering um, flavor. But um, yeah, whatever you have open is is great. Uh, like I said, you can. It doesn't need to be white wine. I wouldn't go out and buy a bottle just to um, make it. But chances are, if you are having a gathering, you probably have some around. So okay, amazing. Transferred the camera to this table. I think I got a little steamy here. Oh, perfect. So um, yeah, let me take a bite of this. Well, let me show you in this like much better lighting how delicious this looks. So, so tasty. Um, you know, depending on how uh, much your guests like spot cons, uh, this is gonna go super quickly. So let's give this a bite. Mm. Not bad. These are a little underdone in the center, but that's how I like it. Um, if you want it to be less of that sort of like raw texture in the middle, I would cook them for a little bit longer than what I did. But to me, these were absolutely perfect. So um, there's that for the garlic butter spot crons, also known as spot crons campy. Um, all right. Any other questions about that before I move on to uh, crab? Yes, one other question was just, what uh, temperature did you cook the spot prawns on? Was it on high heat or? I cooked heat? them on medium heat. Um, high heat is gonna be much too intense for these, um, especially because I took them out of the shells. They don't have that um, you know, little barrier to protect them from the pan. Medium heat should be plenty. And like I said, if it looks like they're cooking too quickly, if the butter is getting dark um, faster than, like if the timing just seems like it's going too too fast, you can always just turn it down to medium low or low, depending on how hot your stovetop runs. So I did end up having to turn mine down to like medium low or low because um, I used like the giant burner on my uh, stove here. So, all right. Um, let me set these delicious spot cons aside for the time being. Um, in the meantime, what I have, this is not right here, 32 ounces. If you want to switch to the other camera, actually, would be the perfect time. This is not 32 ounces of crab. This is more of a snack-sized portion of crab for myself because I will be eating these alone. Um, this is a great thing about the bag of crab um, and even the spot cons. Um, you can just take out as much as you like, stash the rest in the freezer, and then they're good for another day. Um, you know, it's just nice to like seal the bag back up, but um, they have they both come with a nice ice glaze on it. So they should be good um, even if the bag is open. Um, and you know, they're not vacuum sealed, so it doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but this is a nice amount I think for myself. Um, these are already defrosted. Um, you don't have to defrost crab before you heat them up or crab, these crab legs before you heat them up because you can just throw them right into a pot, add a little bit of water, put a lid on, and then, um, over medium heat, they'll be really like very like hype and hot de-iced within like 10 minutes. Um, maybe less depending on how chunky the pieces are like something like this, you might need a uh, full 10 minutes. If you end up having a bunch of pieces like this, it might just be six minutes or something, but you know, there's not really any way to mess this up. Just take them out when they're hot. So um, I'm going to heat these up just a little bit because um, I want them to not be cold. Um, so to do that, I, I'm not gonna get a steaming basket because I just wanna keep things really simple. 
I just added a little um, water to the pan to help um, get these nice and steamy. And I'm going to put them on the stove top. Um, over medium heat should be plenty. Um, I'll just keep an eye on that as we make our remoulade. Um, curious how many of you have had remoulade before. Um, if you want to drop that into the chat or if you even heard of it. Um, basis of the remoulade is a mayo, much like tartar sauce. Um, tartar sauce usually is made with um, an aioli or a mayo to start. And I'm going to add to this some prepared horseradish. Um, I love horseradish. Um, so I'm going to add about, I'm actually just eyeballing this. The recipe has a nice um, uh, ratio, but you can always like add or subtract um, something or adjust the levels of it to your liking. There's really no messing this up. Um, to this, I'm going to add some ketchup. I don't use ketchup that often, but it is really good for sauces. I probably should have shaken that up first. Nice and watery, perfect. <laughs> um, I'm gonna add some Dijon mustard to it, about the same amount um, to give this a nice zesty flavor. I oh, actually don't need whole grain mustard, but why not? We'll add some of that too. A little whole grain mustard for some texture. Um, Capers, I didn't end up having capers at home for whatever reason, but I had caper berries, um, which come in a container like this sometimes. They look like, kind of like all of you. They taste just like capers. Um, so I ended up just chopping those up um, to put into this remoulade. Um, what you can do instead of capers or caper berries is add in some, you know, chopped up pickles or even like a, like, pickle relish, something like that. Just something that has like a nice little pop of um, that pickled -y cured flavor. Um, and a little hot sauce to this, maybe a dash. Again, you can always leave any of this out if you're not a fan of um, pickles or spice or whatever. A little bit of lemon juice for, again, some acidity. And we're going to stir this together. Looks kind of like a mess right now, but it's going to come and become this really delicious looking sauce with a beautiful color, just like this nice pale, um, pale sort of orange, like a little more flavorful looking than tartar sauce. Um, to this, if you like, you can also add some herbs. I think that something like dill, it's really nice, but just since I have some parsley, why not just sprinkle on these little pieces here? And there's that. Let me give this a little taste. Mmm, really yummy. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more um, lemon juice to it just because it's tasting a little sweet for me. And that's it. Remoulade that took me like what was that, maybe two minutes to make. And that can be something that you keep in the fridge um, in a covered container, you know, uh, maybe for like up to a week. Uh, this, the flavors of this will meld um, overnight. So it might even be better the next day, but honestly, this is delicious right now as is. Um, before I forget, I do wanna add a little black pepper to this as well. And you can taste for salt. Um, I feel like there was plenty of um, flavor already in this, so I'm not going to add any salt to it. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, any questions while the crab is steaming up? Yes, we have two. One is which hot sauce did you use? I used Frank's Red Hot. Um, well, let me turn it this way so you can read not sideways. Um, I think this is delicious. Uh, if you wanted to be a little more uh, authentic to New Orleans, you could use Crystal. That's like the classic hot sauce from, from uh, down there. And Tabasco works just fine. Basically anything that just gives a little bit of a pop, um, something a little vinegary, a little zesty. Um, I have Frank's Red Hot just from like making like a buffalo sauce. So that's just what I grabbed and grabbed out of my fridge. Um, I'm not a huge Tabasco fan personally, but that probably would have been you know, closer to uh, crystal. So um, if you don't like horseradish, I'm just looking in the chat here. 
Um, I would just skip it all together. Um, I think, or if you wanted to just add like a little dash of it, but if you don't like horseradish, you probably don't have it in your fridge right now. So um, you can skip it all together. It's just there for like a nice, um, like undertone. Um, this sort of like prepared horseradish I have is not super spicy, but I do love like the texture. I like feeling, you know, those little like uh, grated pieces like in my teeth. I think it's a really nice, uh, nice thing to add. But yeah, like I said, leave it out if you're not into it. So um, let me just grab the crab because I think it's probably hot by now. I see that my pot is nice and steamy. Woo. Oh yeah, that looks really good and steamy right there. So that was just a few minutes in, um, in this pot here. Let me go ahead and transfer this to the serving bowl. Uh, so the thing I really like about dungies for the holidays is you kind of don't have to do that much work because whoever's eating this is the one doing most of the work. You have, you know, leave it to them to take it out of the shell. And it's just a really fun like way to interact with your food. We don't always get to um, be so hands-on with whatever we're cooking. Um, and I'm not even gonna try to, well, maybe I'll try. I was gonna say, I'm not even gonna try to touch these yet because they look very hot, but um, I'll just show you, as you can see, there's some scores on here already. These are gonna be what help you get into the crab. You don't need crab tools for these. Um, you know, sometimes I'll like use like a claw to get into any sort of nook if there's something left, but I think I can safely get this little piece out without burning myself. Um, it is very hot though, but so we've got this little piece right here, nice morsel. Instead of double dipping, I'll just do a little bit of that. And mm, really, really tasty. This complements the sweetness of the Dungeness crab so nicely. You can also maybe at the table serve some plain melted butter. You can serve another dip, have a little medley going. Like imagine like a massive platter of this, like all two pounds, fresh off the stove, fresh out of the steamer with like a whole arrangement of sauces, easy ones. Um, and it's just like basically a party in a bag. So um, that was delicious. And I'll basically have this for days now between this crab and what I have left in my freezer. So um should have a link for that. Uh, oh, you know what? Let me drop a couple links in the chat. So for the remoulade, I did mention that you can use it as like a, a sauce for a sandwich. Um, if you look in the chat now, I'm just going to leave this blackened rockfish sandwich. It says Vesti tartar sauce in the in the link there, but it's actually more of a remoulade. It's not the exact same recipe, um, but that is super delicious. If you haven't had rockfish before, I don't have it here. It's like a nice, very flavorful white fish. Goes, it'll go perfectly with a sauce like that, um, which is why we have a recipe for it. Um, you could also mix something like this remoulade into um, fish cakes. I don't know if that sounds crazy to you, but if you've made fish cakes before, a lot, oftentimes you'll mix in just like a regular mayo to keep it moist add a little more flavor. Um, instead of doing that, you could mix in some remoulade, skip some of the other ingredients because this probably has some of the ingredients anyway that you'd be adding to fish cakes. Um, so for example, the link um, on the right for chipotle fish cakes, you can make into remoulade fish cakes. Um, anyway, I could wax poetic about why I love this sauce so much and why I wanted to feature it today, but those are just a few ideas to get you started. Definitely not, um, I don't want to limit your imaginations on it, but uh, yeah. Any questions about the sauce or the crab or the, the prawns? Uh, yeah, one question about the sauce. Are you able to substitute mayo with something else? I haven't tried it. However, um, I know that something like Greek yogurt is often a really good substitute. Um, I would, instead of doing Greek yogurt, maybe even like suggest sour cream. Um, it's going to make it a little thicker. You could play around with the balance for that. Um, if for some reason you don't want to do mayo, um, what I would do is just make sure that you're not adding um, too much uh, like lemon juice to, to like a Greek yogurt because it might get like super thin, depending on like if you're buying a strained one or not. 
but basically the mayo is there for like a little bit of zest, a little bit of creaminess. Um, so either of those are going to be probably what I would recommend. And you just might want to adjust the amounts of, um, of lemon juice, uh, salt, mayo, or mustard as needed. So yeah, it's, it, it's a good way to build like any sort of creamy dip base. Um, anything else? Otherwise, we're going to wrap this up today. That's all for now. All right. Wonderful. So um, between this remoulade and the spot prawns, these are just two of the fun things that anyone could make with the wild appetizer box. Um, it's a great gift for, like I said, the consummate host. Um, if you know someone that you want to cook for you, give them this box and maybe they'll invite you over for dinner and they might make something like this for you. Um, check it out at the link. You can send a gift box. Um, even if you're not a Wild Alaskan Company member yet, I don't know if any of you um, tuning in right now are not members. Um, there are a lot of gift boxes to pick from. There's like a halibut lover's box, a salmon lover's box, one that's like, I don't know, it's like the Rolls Royce of whole boxes like seafood and, or smoked fish and shellfish. So lots to pick from, take a look. Um, you'll notice that if you're a member of Wild Alaskan Company, you're gonna get a special price on any of the boxes. So that's always a nice perk. Um, and also as a member, um, we are currently, I'll remind you, running a special for Dungies, AKA Dungeness Crab. Um, you'll get, uh, I think it's for one 32 ounce bag. Um, you might want to add a pack of them to your next box. Just saying, it would be a great thing to have in your freezer if you yourself are thinking about entertaining um, or, you know, just as a little early gift to yourself. Um, I, If you're not a member, you're not going to be able to get this exclusive offer until you are a member, but we have a different offer for you. Um, if you use the code LIVE25, you'll get $25 off your Next box, your first box of amazing fish from Wild Alaskan Company. Um, let me drop that uh, little code. Oh, no, Sinana already did it in the chat. Code's in the chat. Um, you can sign up at wildalaskancompany.com, our homepage, um, using that code. And um, that sort of wraps it up. Thank you so much for hanging out today. I hope you feel inspired to bring wild-caught seafood to the holiday table. It's really special stuff, as many of you know. So whether you're serving it at your table or sharing it as a gift, it's 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 a nice thing to consider for um, you know November 1st. I'll be making next week a very, very easy salmon sheet pan meal. Um, I'm gonna use a me maple miso marinade uh, that Monica referenced in a newsletter recently. So it's perfect fall vibes. Hope to see you there and live wild everyone.